As a writer, it's really easy for me to spend a couple of hours every day in front of a screen looking at my laptop and adding words to a document that I've been working on and thinking about. But long before I get to sit at the laptop and add those words to the screen on my MacBook, you'll find me sitting on a sofa or sitting in a coffee shop and adding words to my journal or my notebook, to my A4 pads and the sheets that are such an important part of capturing ideas and the things that I want to talk about and write about. Or to use smarter, slightly more organised notebooks here where, for example, I've got some notes on uh, some forest trails and some footpaths that are important because of the folklore that takes place in those locations. Or here, looking at different nature stories and folklore elements that I've been exploring as I look at my current ideas about a crime fiction novel and the potential for inclusion of certain elements of folklore within that story. And these are the notes that I make. So I'll spend three times as much time on something like this book or these particular types of spiral bound journals, adding my notes, my ideas, doing my research, getting things in place before I sit down and actually write. Because what I find that is if I take my ideas from here and I drop them into a journal or into a notebook like this, I am better equipped by the time I actually come round to do the writing that is the finished result that I see as a finished manuscript or that readers see in something like the books here as part of my back catalogue or my backlist of finished books. I consider myself really lucky to have grown up at a time in the world when there was nothing digital and everything was as simple as a diary or a notebook like this that would slip into my then schoolboy blazer pocket and it would have the details of clubs and societies happening at school or things after school like Cub Scouts and the Scout Group and the book would literally be I met such and such a friend and Chris and I had tea at his house. Very simple old-fashioned physical diaries written in sometimes with a pencil but often with a standard Bic Biro and I've still got many of those books. Innocent days and happy times of play and leisure and just growing up before secondary school, after primary school, having those adventures together out in the countryside, coming home because it was getting dark and we knew it was probably time for tea. I also grew up in a time when there were no computers other than computers the size of a living room that maybe would do a few simple tasks to record and measure data in a big organisation. But there were no computers at school. There were no computers in people's homes. The idea that there would ever be anything digital, there was no comprehension of that. And so my dependence upon paper and pen was not so much a new adopted pattern. It was what I grew up with and what I have always been the most comfortable with and where I feel the most natural when trying to capture ideas. The pad of paper that I use can be lined, it can have grid squares on it, it could be completely blank. That doesn't matter so much as the fact that I can grab a pen and add ink to paper and let my thoughts out of here and to capture the ideas in a physical format that I can go back to whenever it suits me and think about what it is that I was considering at the time that I made the entry or the note and decide whether I want to use that information later. The transfer of ink from nib or biro point and brush tip pen is the flow of the ideas and the ponderings and it's this which matters most in how we go about organising life. If the aspect of my life where I go to write and capture ideas is a significant portion of how I spend my time, then the tools that I use for this are important to me. And this is where the paper takes precedence over the digital and the white screen. I am a stationary collector. I would use the word hoarder, but that always seems a little bit vulgar and unattractive, even though it might, in fact, be an observable truth. My study has plenty of pens and paper on my desk, but my storeroom has reams of paper just waiting to be appreciated. Sometimes I feel like the horizontal lines on a sheet of paper can be stifling, wanting to limit the movement of the pen and by default limit our creativity. For me, I've long been a user of hardbound A6 notebooks 
These could be lined, unlined, or with the grid pattern that is nice to give that sense of order, albeit elegant and discreet, serving as a barely visible guide to our note making and note taking. This is just about you and the paper. Phone temptation is easy. Laptop distraction is only a few seconds away. Put these things to one side or step away from the digital in order to find and explore your own core thoughts and let them loose in your notebooks. And so my notebooks become a place where I can think through the ink. I can organise by capturing ideas, dropping them into place in these notebooks and making sense of the ideas as I'm having them. Sometimes I'll have an idea on the bus or in a coffee shop or in the middle of a conversation with family and I'll think to myself, OK, maybe there's a clue here about something. Can I add that to a notebook and find value in it later on? An idea that I'm working on at the moment came from looking at one of my ordnance survey maps a few months ago. It was completely out of the blue, but it led me to explore an idea which hadn't occurred to me before, and that may find itself into one of the Nottinghamshire stories. Capturing your ideas in the messy stage is like going out on a walk with a friend. You know this route starts in one village and it will take you to the next, but how you get there is really only a function of the available footpaths. You could walk through the forest, you could meander along the side of a field, and the conversation will go back and forth between the two of you. And it has no real agenda, but as ideas crop up, it informs the next stage of the conversation. That might lead to a little segue into something completely different, and you may not come back to that earlier part of the chat, but something here develops into another area or another thing to explore, another theme to chat about and to develop. And I find it's exactly the same with my notebook. I'll put an idea down here, just two or three quick lines or some jotting, maybe a couple of paragraphs, and I can forget about it. I don't have to store it. I haven't got to search for it on a computer. It's in the notebook if I want to go back to it and whenever I want to go back to it. And sometimes in this messy stage, I will explore an idea several times. I've got some notes that I was thinking about a couple of weeks ago as we entered the new year. I will develop those into something else, perhaps in early February. But the seed of the idea was the thought that popped into my mind a few weeks ago. It will grow and develop into something else that I may or may not use in a web article or in a journal idea. But it's there and it's safe and it's protected and it can grow in its little incubation stage in the notebook and it might then make it into something more organised and more formal later and perhaps it will get into the laptop. Who knows? I'm not trying to control it. I'm just trying to capture ideas in that messy, casual, informal way that will possibly come to something else. It might be that in my notebook, I'm exploring ideas that are about my role as a dad or as a husband, about the work activity as a writer and as a note taker. But each month I have a summary of the values that are significant and important to me. And I'll use something like the Franklin Covey compass sheet, which allows me to track what is important and how my activity or my thoughts around those ideas, which are all value based, deserves more attention and more focus. It might be that there is something we need to do as a family. It might be that I need to support my wife or one of my sons in a certain activity. That gets a note in my journal and I can think on paper about the best way to provide that support or that help. Or on the other hand, it could be that the seed of an idea has its birthplace in one of the messy notepad sheets and I explore and develop that into something more significant and more meaningful that is value related and that appears in my main anchor journal. It's when you start to sift through the notes that you make that you see what is perhaps an A for importance, a B for being significant but not urgent, and a C for something that is very much everyday run-of-the-mill activity that could be done today or it could be done next week. Having a simple process like this allows you to take the general ideas that you've thrown into your notepads and into your journal pages and extract what is important 
and to determine how you might use that information to go in a new direction or to go in a stronger way to something that's important for you. This is the function of my anchor journal, normally the A5 book where the bigger and more general ideas tend to end up. It might be that I drop some ideas in here and I do nothing with them for a month or two. That's fine. When I'm ready, I can go back to the theme and pull detail from it, potentially considering how this might be used or expressed somewhere later. You shouldn't worry about how you present or format your notes because these are here to help you think and to guide you through your own mess and scribbles to find what matters to you. Remember that this second stage is all about creating value for you and for your life from the way that you think through ink. Step three is about committing to action. Committing to action means probably taking several of these ideas and putting them on a three month or a four month timeline and saying to yourself, how do I fit this issue, which is important for this aspect of my life into my diary, into my workflow? How can I take this idea and develop it slowly and steadily over the next two or three months and find focus for this idea? If it helps you, whether in your A5 notebook or on an A4 pad of paper, bring together the ideas that are occupying your mind and work through them on paper. At the moment, for example, I'm looking at the next three months and thinking for February, March and April, what is it that I should be looking to achieve? What are the assets and resources that I should bring into play for this idea right now, where if I allocate them properly, that project or idea, or in my case, perhaps a manuscript, has the likelihood of success because I'm putting the right support behind the idea. Pull from your written ideas, add extra definition. It might be a mind map, it might be a timeline, it might be a visual series of post-it notes stuck onto a cork board that allows you to think, okay, these are the four or five things that are the most important for me to focus on and allocate my time and energy to over the next three months, here's how I'm going to go about it. And there we have it. I hope you find that those are three really simple ideas for how to think on paper in order to better organize your life in line with what's important to you. So grab your pads of paper grab your A5 journals and make things happen and using the idea of thinking through paper to organize your life in a better way and you're doing this to capture thoughts, create value and commit to action by thinking through paper in order to create what works for you and the things that are important to you. Let me know how you get on. Please share your thoughts in the comments because it helps me as a small channel, but also it allows other people to see what other viewers are doing in order to make paperwork work better for them.